I'm sort of in a pickle right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's time for another episode of Gimme Some Torah. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Give Me Some Torah. The Torah portion this week is Korach, so let's take a look at Numbers, chapter 16, verse 1. The verse tells us that Korach gathered his followers against Moses. Three of these followers are mentioned by name in that verse. Datan, Aviram, and a man named On. Our sages in the Midrash teach that On almost became a follower of Korach, but that his wife wisely convinced him not to join. The story goes like this. On was all ready to join up with the rebels when his wife pointed out that he had absolutely nothing to gain from associating with these traitors. She said, look, honey, I love you. You're sweet. You're not bad looking. But let's face it, you're an idiot and kind of a loser. If Moses ends up being the leader, you'll be an idiot and a loser. If Korach wins, you'll still be an idiot and a loser. So what do you have to gain from risking your life in a rebellion? On's wife says, go to bed, honey. Go take a nice long nap at home and I will handle Korach. So On goes to bed and On's wife uncovers her hair and walks outside on her porch. When Korach and his henchmen come over to summon On to the rebellion, they saw On's wife with uncovered hair and they turned around in embarrassment because they had seen a woman in what was then considered to be a state of undress. So they ended up leaving On at home, and as a result, he survived. The earth swallowed Korach and his gang, but On escaped death by doing nothing and taking a nap instead. The lesson of this Midrash is that sometimes doing nothing is the correct response to a crisis. We often hear in political debates on a variety of issues that we have to do something or that doing nothing is not an option. But these are arguments based on false premises. We don't always have to do something. It depends on the case in question. Often, the proposed solution to a crisis will do absolutely nothing to solve the problem and might even make it worse. Sometimes, doing nothing is the best option available. This line of thinking is counterintuitive in American culture because we are always being told to do something. We are a nation of doers. But the Jewish tradition tells us that if our goal is wisdom and not just proud chest thumping, we have to consider the possibility that we should do nothing. And that's all for now. I'm Rabbi Eli Garfinkel of Temple Bethel in Somerset, New Jersey. Check back soon for another episode of Gimme Some Torah.